Welcome to this second video uh, introducing you to documentary and documentary form. Having looked in the first introductory video at the traits and features of documentary and what makes a documentary different and special in comparison to a Hollywood or a mainstream cinema fiction film, we're now going to think about some of the moral and ethical issues and debates that surround documentary. So we're continuing that discussion and really thinking about how this form is problematic and difficult and often challenging. So your first activity, and this really is a case of personal opinion, is I want you to rank order which of these things you think is most important for documentary. So do you think documentary films should be objective, so fair and balanced? Do you think they should be non-fiction, so never based, never using fictions, never making things up? Do you think documentaries construct things, build things, make things? Do you think documentaries should be truthful? Do you think documentary should be realistic? And finally, do you think documentaries should be cinematic? So glorious and grand in some way. Start off by putting those six traits, those six qualities in a rank order, one to six, and then justify why you've put them in that order. And then underneath that, I want you to think about what does this tell you about the nature of documentary? So for example, it might be that rather than cinematic that could be right at the bottom of your list and you think documentaries and you believe they should be realistic what does that tell you about documentary well if they're realistic therefore they must be objective and truthful therefore you're putting non-fiction construction and cinematic lower down because in your view if that's the case we should be able to rely on a documentary to tell us the truth and show us reality in some way without it being biased, without it coming at us with its own opinion and its, its own ideas and ideals. Equally, you might say a documentary always comes from a political point of view or someone having an opinion that they're wanting to express and show or an argument that they're wanting to express and show. And you can perhaps look at some of the civil rights documentaries that have become particularly um, important and central as part of say Netflix uh, Netflix is offering of documentaries um, there's there's one about the American factory uh, where an American factory is taken over by Chinese ownership and it explores some of those issues but it certainly brings with it a particular political stance and then I want you to think about why you have made those choices and what does it tell you about the nature of documentary but we are starting to think about whether we can trust a documentary, whether documentaries should be objective and fair, or are they often objective and fair or not. So now you've started to think about the nature of documentary and some of the ethical issues around it and some of what documentaries should or shouldn't be doing, we're now going to look at two theorists and two texts. Uh, first of all, we're going to read uh, some extracts from uh, Patricia Aufderheider's uh, documentary, A Very Short Introduction. And as a general starting point for your own reading, uh, the Very Short Introduction series published by Oxford University Press is a really good place to start with anything that you need to study in any subject. And then we're going to look and move on to uh, some short extracts from The Act of Documenting by Brian Winston, Gail Venston and Wang Chi. Um, two sets of theories, two sets of ideas. So we'll start off with this first quotation. Uh, Aufterheider says that documentaries are a movie about real life. And that is precisely the problem. Documentaries are about real life. They are not real life. They are not even windows onto real life. They are portraits of real life, using real life as their raw material, constructed by artists and technicians who make myriad decisions about what story to tell to whom and for what purpose. So for each of these five extracts from critical thinkers and writers about documentary, I want you to write down what your response is. So to this one, I'd be saying and I'd be writing down that after Hyder is very clear that documentaries are always a construction. Rather than being an actuality, and if you need to check what that term means, watch the first video again. Documentaries are a construction. There is always an, a degree of fakery about a documentary. There is always a degree to which they have been put together. They are a portrait, they are a construction. And they are made by an author, by a filmmaker, who is always looking to tell a story and is always looking to push with a particular purpose. 
So in this sense, uh, after Haida is warning us that we shouldn't necessarily trust documentaries, that we should always approach documentaries cautiously, always considering the backgrounds, opinions, beliefs and the narratives that are being pushed towards us. We must approach documentary critically. But what else do you think uh, the implications of this are, the consequences of this are for watching documentaries? As I say, with this one, the consequence of this statement is that we should not necessarily trust a documentary because they are about real life, but they are not a direct grasp of them. A documentary is very rarely an unbroken observation. They are, con they are a construction with multiple scenes, sequences and sources all blended and put together. In this next statement, after Haider says, the genre of documentary is defined by the tension between the claimed truthfulness and the need to select and represent the reality one wants to share. Documentaries are a set of choices about subject matter, about the storyline and about the target audience. So if we take that statement, Alf Dyder is not saying that documentary makers necessarily always set out to mislead us, although some do, and this is something that Stories We Tell plays with in a really interesting way. She explores it as a tension, that filmmakers and, direct and documentary makers are walking this tension between truthfulness and fiction that they are making choices to tell their story and they are approaching that to craft a very particular narrative with a very particular set of audience responses and spectator responses. So when you're watching the documentaries that I've set up for you to study, I want you to think very closely and carefully about what is this documentary maker trying to make you do? What is this documentary maker trying to make you think? And I want you to comment on what you think the implications and knock-on effects of having after Hyder's second statement in mind as you watch your films. And in this third and final section um, from a very short introduction to documentary, we have this really interesting set of questions. Documentaries will continue to wrestle productive, productively with questions such as how does a filmmaker responsibly represent reality? What truths will be told? Why are they important and to whom? What is the filmmaker's responsibility to in relationship with the subject of the work? Who gets the opportunity to make documentaries? How are they seen and under what constraints? So that is, these are a really fundamental set of questions. And each documentary you watch, you could ask that set of questions. And we need to ask that set of questions. Because each filmmaker and each documentary maker will represent reality in a slightly different way. There will be opinion blended in with truth and that opinion will manipulate and shape how we see those truths. We might be thinking about what the filmmaker prioritises, what's important, what's significant and then how does the filmmaker build a relationship between their subject and that might be a person or a topic or an event and themselves. And finally who are they seen for and how are they seen and where are they seen and that comes back to that first question in the first in the first video where I asked you to think about where these documentaries were being watched and in what circumstance you know can you honestly say and put your hand on heart and say you've watched a documentary in the cinema it's very very rare that particularly where we live in a sort of, in a relatively rural a non-urban setting that we we have the opportunity to see documentaries in the cinema. So this second text now, um, The Act of Documenting, uh, written by Brian Winston, Gail Vanston and Wang Chi, uh, we have them thinking about the nature of construction, so the nature of how truthful or not a particular documentary is. And they say with digitalization, so that's film no longer being recorded onto 35mm film, but instead being recorded digitally. With digitalization, the place of trust in the audience's assent to any communication is still crucial, but the basis for it is rendered more unsafe. The documentary filmmaker, after all, is well able to reimagine her witness of a story of the world through a variety of techniques from reconstruction to animation and CGI. It is up to the spectator to determine the documentary value of the result, 
just as much as he comes to the judgment about the authenticity of the realist photographic images in the first place. So there's a lot packed into this, so let's just unpick this. First of all, they raise the question of the relationship between the filmmaker and the spectator, and that that is a relationship that the filmmaker is always manipulating. They go on to make the point that the filmmaker, the documentary maker, is showing you their choice of one story through their version of the world. And they can use lots of different techniques, as we discussed in the first video with those documentary features. They can use reconstructions, animation and CGI. Those things are not real. They are constructs. They're superficial. In essence, they're fakes. So they are crafting a story in their choice of world. And finally then, that means that the responsibility doesn't lie with the filmmaker, it lies with the spectator to come to a judgement about how far we can trust that filmmaker and how and why we should respond to the filmmaker in a particular way. When we think of films like Blackfish, which has become a really infamous documentary, that is a film made by Cowperthwaite to generate a very, very strong response, to make us reject keeping giant killer whales in captivity, regardless of your original opinion. And it will be fascinating as we come to study Polly's film, Stories We Tell, how you react to her as a filmmaker, but the subjects of her film, which is, in this case, her family. And having raised all these questions of trust and thought about wider theories and wider thinking and wider ways in which films are made and constructed and now documentaries are made and constructed, uh, Winston, Vanston and Chi comment on particularly Sarah Polly here. So they say the actual provenance, so the source of, the provenance of Polly's B-roll, the series of 8mm home movies she uses to illustrate the testimony of her informants, cannot be discerned for sure from the screen. Their appositeness, so their appropriateness, how well they match. Their, their appositeness is such that doubts as to the authenticity slowly grow in the spectator's mind. There is a great narrative trick that Polly plays in this film, whereby you don't know if the home cinema footage she is showing us is real home cinema footage or is a reconstruction, and it's only towards the end of the film that that is truly revealed to us. Now, I'm telling you this now because I want you to be aware of it the first time when we come to eventually watching the film. But there is a slow growth and movement through the film where we slowly start to wonder, is this true or is this fake? Is this real or has it been reconstructed? Has it been reconstructed or is it a construction from fiction? So the lines between truth and reality in Sarah Polly's documentary become blurred. They, uh, these critics go on to say, non-professional enactments and reenactments, whether presentational or representational, can all make valid claims to show us life, just as can professional reenactments. So their point is, despite that question of trust being made, perhaps documentary in documentary form is about showing us life. And these are just means of representing that because we can never truly experience another person's life on screen. We're always seeing it through the filter of the screen that we're watching it on. So perhaps whilst we might question the authenticity and the truthfulness and the trustworthiness of documentary in documentary form, equally we need to give thought and consider the ways in which these are simply lives being represented to us in a different way to Hollywood fiction films. So with each of those statements, each of those five slides and six different statements from our, from our sets of theorists, I want you to have said what are the implications of that for viewing and watching documentaries for the first time? What are the consequences of that? So there should be notes for each of those statements. Now you've done that, you can go back to the original uh, set of issues that we explored right at the start of this of this video and I want you to think and rank order those six elements again objectivity non-fiction construction truth reality and cinematic 
I would hope that having considered these aspects of elements, you might give some thought to changing your rank order. And I want you to think about what's made you change that rank order. I want you to go on and note what these theoretical statements have made you consider that you hadn't thought about before. And then write down a series of bullet points about how you are going to approach the study of documentary. And what are you going to be looking out for as you watch documentary films in this course for the first time and you experience these films for the first time.